hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how i made this two-piece a crop top with a v-shaped sleeve and a trouser please keep on watching and let's get started i have my african print here and it is about six yards so you can use any fabric of your choice my fabric is folded into two and i have marked the line across the fabric so what i'm marking now is the length of the top the length I'm marking here is 17 inches from the shoulder line and I'm also going to add 1 inch allowance for hemming. For a crop top, you can actually use 16, 17 or 18 depending on how you want the length to be. On the shoulder line, I'll mark the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus 0.5 inch for seam allowance and I'll come down from the shoulder line and mark the chest line which is at 9 inches. I'll mark the shoulder measurements divided by 2 on the chest line and I'll connect with a straight line to make the mark at the top. Next, I'll mark a neckline width of 4 inches and a neck depth of 5 inches and I'll connect with a curve. So I decided to reduce the neck depth to 4.5 instead of the 5 inches I used. So that is what I am doing here and I will just connect with a curve like so. I will come down by 1 inch for the shoulder slant and I will connect it into the neck weight. So I am going to add half inch allowance to the top of the shoulder for joining allowance. On the chest line, I will go in with the bust circumference divided by 4. From the shoulder slant, I will divide what I have left into 2 and get the midpoint. And at the midpoint, I will go in by 0.5. And I'll connect those three points together to form the armhole. The bust measurement I marked on the chest line, I'm going to deduct one from it and I'm going to put that measurement on the waist line. And I'll connect with a straight line. Now I am adding my one inch allowance to the side. After adding the allowance, I'm going to connect with a straight line and cut it out. After cutting, I'm going to use this piece to cut out the back piece. So I decided to make a difference in the neckline, so I'm going to use the 5 inches for the front neckline and I'm going to use 4.5 for the back neckline. I have placed the front and the back together, right side facing each other and I'm going to go ahead and use half inch to stitch the shoulders together. And I'm going to use this piece of fabric to pipe the neckline. The width of this fabric is 1.5 inches. Yeah, I am done joining the shoulder and I have piped the neckline and this is what I have. Now, I'm going to go ahead and join the sides together. After joining the sides together, I'm going to aim the down part also. To cut out the sleeve, I have my basic sleeve pattern. This is a long sleeve pattern and I have pinned it on this fabric and the fabric is folded into two. At the bottom of the sleeve, I am going to add 8 inches extension to the waist. I'm adding 8 inches to give us the bell sleeve effect. So you can add 8 inches or 9 inches or even 7 inches. Now I am adding my 1 inch allowance at the bottom of the sleeve and I'll connect with a straight line. Now I am going to use my ruler to connect from the bottom to the top of the sleeve. I'm just going to connect with a straight line. Remember to add 1 inch allowance to the side of the sleeve if your pattern does not have allowance included. Now from the folded part on the sleeve, you are going to go up by 2 inches just like you see me doing and I'm going to bring my curve now and connect from the 2 inches mark to meet the other side of the sleeve. That is all on the sleeve and I am going to cut it out now. I am going to use this one to cut out the second sleeve.
this is after i was done joining the side of the top and also aimed the down part and i'm just flipping it to the wrong side i'll bring in my sleeves now i have folded the aim of my sleeve and i have joined the sides together so i'm just going to attach it to the top and the top is ready Measurements you'll be needing for this trouser are the waist measurements, the hip measurements, the round tie measurements, the round knee measurements and also the ankle measurements where you want your trouser to stop. Another measurement you'll be needing is from the waistline to the knee line and also you'll be needing the full length of the trouser. I'll set that aside now and we'll start marking. First thing I want to do here is to mark one inch from the top of the fabric here. My fabric is folded into two. I marked one inch from the top down to the bottom of the fabric. Then I'll rule a line across the top of the fabric and that will be the starting line. The starting line will serve as the waistline. The next thing I'll do now is to divide the hip measurement. The hip I'm working with is 40 inches. 40 inches divided by 4 is 10. I'll go ahead and mark 10 inches from the waistline and I'll connect it with a ruler. That line will serve as the crotch line. So whatever your hip measurement is, divide it by 4 and come down from the waistline and mark it and that line will serve as the crotch line. From that crotch line, I'll go up by 2.5 inches and I'll connect it with a ruler and that line will serve as the hip line. The next thing I'll mark now is from the waist to the knee line. Take that measurement on your client or on yourself and whatever you get, you mark it from the waistline. So I'm marking the knee line now. For me, my knee line is 23 inches from the waistline and that is what I marked here. The next thing I'll mark now is the full length of the trouser. The full length of my trouser is 40 inches and I'm marking it there. After marking the full length, I'll go ahead and add 2 inches allowance for the trouser. 2 inches allowance for aiming. On the crotch line, I'll go ahead and mark the round tie measurement divided by 2. I'm placing my tape from that starting point. That is where I'll mark it. And after marking, I'll divide whatever I have there by 2. And that line, I'll connect it straight down to the M. Whatever measurement I'll be taking now, I'll be dividing it in between the line I have. On the hip line, I'll go in with the hip measurement divided by 4. And I'll mark it there. I'll extend that hip measurement up to the waistline and I'll connect with a ruler. To form the crotch, I'll place my curved ruler from the waistline. I'll make sure that from the waistline, I connect it up onto the tie measurements we marked out earlier. The next thing is to go in with the waist measurements. The waist measurement divided by 4. Only the hip measurement and the waist measurements will be divided by 4. Every other measurement will be divided by 2. Every other measurement like the tie measurements, the round knee measurements and the ankle measurements will be divided by 2. To mark the waist measurement, place your tape at the start of the crotch line on the waistline and mark it. So whatever you get, you mark it there and you connect it back to the hip line. I added one inch for that to the waist measurement. The next thing I want to mark now is the round knee measurement. You divide whatever you have into two and you mark it on both sides of the line. For instance, if your round knee measurement is 16 inches, 16 inches divided by two is eight. Go ahead and share that 8 inches in between the lines. That means you'll be marking 4 inches on both sides of the line. Go ahead and do the same thing at the ankle line too. Divide your ankle measurement by 2, whatever you have. You share it into 2 in between the lines and go ahead and connect all your lines together. So that there won't be any folding at the front of the trouser. I'll come down by 1.5 inches and I'll connect with my curved ruler back into the waistline. I'll cut out now but I'll still maintain the formal line we, we have on the waistline before I came down by 1.5 inches because I'll be using this front to cut out the back. I don't want you to get confused when we are cutting out the back so I'll still maintain the first waistline we add. 
then after cutting out the back i'll trim out that excess from the 1.5 inches please take note that i did not add any allowance to this front all the allowances i'll be adding will be on the back To cut out the back, place the front on another fabric that is folded into two and start by extending that line you have on the crotch line and also on the knee line and also on the waist line. Extend it to the new fabric you have. After extending the line, I'll go up from the waist line by one inch. I'll be adding allowance to the back of the trouser. The first allowance I'm adding is on the waist line. I'm adding 3.5 inches. And I'll connect it with a straight ruler up to that point I extended it out by 3.5 inches. The next allowance I want to add is on the crotch line. I'll extend the crotch line by 2.5. You can decide to extend that crotch line by 3 inches too. 3 inches is fine, 2.5 inches is also fine. The 3.5 inches we added to the waistline, that is inclusive. Remember that we added that allowance to the front of the trouser. So the 3.5 inches we are also extending the back width. That allowance is also included and ease is also included. So on the crotch line, I came out by 2.5 inches. Like I said earlier, you can do 3 inches. I'm connecting those two points together now to form the back crotch. On the knee line, I'll come out by 2 inches. You can also come out by 2.5 inches. And also at the end, I'll come out by 2 inches and I'll connect those points together. We are done with the back of the trouser now. The next thing is to cut it out. The first thing I'm cutting out is the 1.5 inches I came down from the waistline on the front of the trouser. I explained to you earlier that it is after cutting out the back of the trouser that I'll cut out that part. This is what we have for both the front and the back and the first thing I'm doing here is to get the midpoint for both the front and the back because I want to mark out the darts. For the front of the trouser, the dart length will be 5 inches. So I'll take in half inch dart on fold. That means I'm taking in 1 inch. Then the length of the front dart will be 5 inches. I'll take in half inch on fold. That means I'm taking in 1 inch. For the back, the length of the dart will be 7 inches. I'll go over to the sewing machine to stitch the darts and I'll bring it back and show you what to do next. This is after stitching the darts and this is what we have. The next thing I want to do now is to fix the zipper fly in front of the trouser. For the zipper fly, I went ahead to cut out these two pieces of fabric and I had it interfacing to it. The length of the fabric is 8 inches while the width is 2 inches. You can decide to make the length longer like 9 inches depending on the length of the zip you want in front. And you can also make the width 2.5 inches or 2 inches. Mine is 8 inches in length and 2 inches width. I placed one piece of the zipper fly on my fabric and from where it stopped, I came up by one inch. From that point, I'll mark it up to the end. That is where I'll go ahead and stitch now. This is after stitching and this is what we have. I'll go ahead and open it up now and I'll press it. I have to iron that part in place and I'll fold in the remaining excess we have at the top with the iron. I stitch like half inch so I'm going to be, I'll go ahead and fold the top part with half inch also. Mm -hmm. 
twisting I want to do now is to place one piece of the zipper fly on the left side of the trouser. I'll place it on the left side of the trouser, right side facing each other and I'll go ahead and stitch. From where I stopped my stitch on the trouser, I'll continue it on the zipper fly and stitch it in place. I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll bring it back and show you. This is after I was done stitching. I don't know if you can see my stitch there, but this is after I was done. And the next thing I'll do now is to go ahead and iron that zipper fly. I want to iron it first. The next thing I'll do now is to place my zip on the trouser. The part of the zipper fly I ironed now I'll place my zip on it and I'll make sure it is covering the teeth of the zip. So make sure that it's covering the teeth of the zip, that the teeth of the zip is not showing. After placing it exactly the way I want it, I'll go ahead and pin. But while pinning, I'm only pinning the zipper fly to the zip. I am not pinning the trouser together with it. Please watch closely what I'm doing so that you can get it. I am not pinning the trouser. I am not pinning the trouser together with the zip. I am only pinning the zipper fly with the zip. Make sure that the zipper fly is covering the teeth of the zip. It is not showing outside. Please come down by half inch while placing your zip because I'll be attaching band to this trouser. Let your zip start half inch away from the top of the trouser. After pinning that down, I'll go ahead and pin the other side of the zip to the trouser. In case you might want to get confused on this part, you can go ahead and stitch the first one in place before moving on to the second part. So the next thing I'll do now is to place that is to place my zip. I'll pin my zip to the other side of the trouser. I'll pin the zip to the other side of the trouser like you see me doing. Once I'm done pinning, I'll place the other piece on the zip like this. Make sure that the side of the first piece aligns with the second piece and you are pinning it to the other side of the zip. When you open it up, it should look like this. This is how you know that you got it right. I'll go ahead and stitch it in place both sides together with the zip and I'll bring it back and show you. Like I said earlier, before putting the last piece, you can go ahead and stitch the zip first before using the last piece to cover it so that you don't get confused. You can remove this last piece and stitch the zip in place first before putting it and stitching on it. This is it after I was done stitching and this is what yours should be looking like now. I'm cutting out the excess zip and I'll open it up so that you can see what we have. This is how yours should be looking like too. And the next thing I want to do now is to top stitch on the zipper fly. What you have to do is to pin that part you'll be top stitching on. Pin it together so that it doesn't shift away. You have to pin it. After pinning, then you go ahead and follow the shape you have at the back. You follow that shape and top stitch on the front part, just like you see me marking now. I am done putting the stitch on the front now. I don't know if you can see my stitch. 
but this is what it is looking like. To finish the zip part now, go ahead and pick the two pieces together with the zip and we are going to run a stitch there to close it. Just run a stitch there like that and that will be all on the zip. Moving on to the back now, go ahead and stitch the back crotch with half inch allowance. Go ahead and stitch it. And this is after I was done. I went ahead to place the front and the back together and I stitched the bottom part of the trouser in place. I used half inch seam allowance to stitch the bottom part of both the front and the back together. And this is what we have. The next thing now is to stitch the sides of the trouser. But you have to cross check your allowance before you join the sides of the trouser together so just fold in the back close to the front piece like that and mark your waist measurements from the midpoint make sure that your waist measurement is correct and whatever allowance you have you are going to stitch it do the same thing for both the hip the knee line and the aim I'll go ahead and stitch the sides in place now and i'll bring it back and show you guys i lost the clip where i cut out the band and where i showed you how to fix the band to the trouser so sorry i couldn't show you that part but the band width is 1.5 inches and i attached it to the waist of the trouser and this is what we have the odd the part on the zipper fly you can either put hook and eye or you put a button hole and fix a button to it but this is the finished look of the trouser I also went ahead to fold the down part with the 2 inches allowance I left there. And guys, this is all on this trouser. Thank you guys for watching. Please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Please turn on your notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Please follow me on Instagram at stitchedbyst. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!